A jury's been selected to hear the federal trial of Tahawa Rana. The Chicago businessman is charged with plotting a terrorist attack in Denmark and aiding the 2008 terrorist attacks in Mumbai, India, where 174 people were killed. Opening statements begin Monday. The trial will be closely watched by U.S., Indian, and Pakistani officials. That's because it's expected to lay out evidence that Pakistan's intelligence service, the ISI, played a key role in the Mumbai attack. WBEZ's Tony Arnold is following the trial, and so is local journalist Mayank Chaya, and he covers South Asian affairs and is writing a book about the trial. Um, We talked about this a a while ago, in 2009, I think, and the community here wasn't really convinced of Tahawa Rana's um, possible guilt. Uh, everybody knows him. He's he's well respected. And what's the attitude now? I think it's pretty much the same. Uh, I was uh, at the courthouse the other day, and there were a couple of, uh, at least one man who came to basically greet him. And uh, all that I kept hearing from him uh, throughout as the jury was being introduced, unbelievable, unbelievable. And uh, I think uh, there is a degree of denial uh, about this whole issue uh, within the Pakistani community. But more than that, I think Pakistan is so besieged with uh, much greater distractions and crises that they see this as uh, one more of those, if if at all. And I think uh, what's overwhelming the debate now is the, the, the presence and the final killing of Osama bin Laden uh, within uh, practically a earshot of Islamabad. So that's still overwhelming the debate. I, I don't think Rana is still uh, uh, seen as, 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 as a major figure yet. Have you looked at the indictment and seen some of the what the prosecution's going to bring out here, and uh, what do you think of it? I think it it, it is fairly detailed. Uh, uh, the, the, the defense has argued that essentially Tahabur Rana was duped. Those were the words used once upon a time uh, by the David Coleman Headley, who used to be Dawood Gilani. Uh, that's their basic defense in saying that he used the cover of Rana's business uh, to set up an office in Mumbai. And Dr. Rana was, Dr. Rana I'm saying because he's a physician by training. He was unaware of what was going on. But the prosecution has specifically talked about things like uh, Major Iqbal. There is, a, there is a figure called Major Iqbal who is named in the superseding indictment, uh, who is supposed to be of uh, 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 someone from the Pakistani intelligence, inter-services intelligence. Uh, we don't know for a fact, but uh, the, 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 uh, the prosecution says that Major Iqbal in 2000, July 8, communicated with Headley by passing some instructions through Dr. Rana. So they are pretty specific about what role he might have played. And if you read, I was Googling some stuff in the Indian press, and there are people in the Indian press who uh, speculate that uh, Rana was actually controlling Headley, that really he was um, kind of a more director type than um, than he paints himself at, as so there, there we hear about. I think uh, a lot of that is speculation, as you're saying, because uh, I, I don't think people have had that kind of access to Dr. Rana to make those judgments. I would reserve my judgment on that, but it's an interesting theory. It, it, it sounds very thrilling. On the, on, if I can just jump in, on a note, there's a lot of uh, filings in court that have been kept under seal that are, are secret, that the public is not able to see, that the media is not able to see. There are even some filings that Rana's defense attorneys are not able to see that are all strictly from the prosecution. So there's a lot of unknown factors still in this, um, in leading up to this trial that uh, we'll see how much to, it will actually be revealed in, in p- open court. Now, one of the strange things is that David Headley, who looks you know, like he did a lot more to uh, create the Mumbai attacks, is going to testify against Rana. He's uh, turned evidence. Uh, the government has uh, worked with him on this. Uh, it's It sounds a little unusual. No, it's it's not that unusual because that was part of his uh, plea deal, uh, uh, that the death penalty will be off the table. His extradition, especially to India, would be off the table because I'm sure coming from that part of the world, even uh, Headley realizes what... Uh, interacting with the law enforcement can mean in in a situation like that. So once those two are out of the way, he's obliged to uh, testify on behalf of the government. He doesn't have much choice there. 
And this is a great idea for the government to get Headley to testify because then they can run it back to the ISI or uh, other contacts that he had in Pakistan, and there were plenty of them, it seems. But you can fairly conclude that uh, if if Headley were to be explicit in his naming names, uh, the Pakistanis would quite easily shrug it off and throw him under the bus, as it were. I don't think uh, they'll, that will carry a lot of weight with, uh, because they have a much bigger problem to deal with after the bin Laden killing. So Headley is, has suddenly become a relatively insignificant figure again. Tony? And uh, on that note, I think the defense attorneys for, for Rana would have a lot of uh, questions for him on cross-examination. They've even said publicly that they look forward to this cross-examination of Headley because he's he has a, a, a kind of a history with him, uh, to him. He's... Um, he was arrested a few years ago for on heroin charges. Um, he uh, has been married a, a few times, um, and I think that there might be some some character issues that the defense attorneys can can rework here to uh, for for their own advantage for for Rana's defense. One of the things I was struck by in looking at the indictment is how much uh, email and phone call evidence. There were lots of phone calls that they seem to have taped. Um, how long did they have? surveillance on these people. It's interesting that, um, how much do we know about that? My my sense is that uh, at least three years, uh, because the dates that I keep reading in uh, the government documents uh, date back to something like 2006, 2007. So they had been tracking him for a while. Now, I don't know if tracking him uh, would mean that he was stabbed or whether they were following him in any way, but it seems that they were tracking him. Yeah, Tony? on that note, yeah, uh, I think that they have uh, in the indictments. The prosecutors show that the, they have Deadly, uh, David Headley going to Mumbai uh, five times between the 2006 and 2008. The, the Mumbai attacks were in November of 2008. Um, they have him uh, training under uh, uh, what the uh, group that the U.S. government considers a terrorist group in the early 2000s for going over to. Um, uh, overseas uh, uh, several times between 2002 and 2003 for training exercises with this group. So um, they, I think that they, whether that, I think they've been tracking Headley for a while. And one of the interesting things in the indictment is Headley seems to have posted things on um, open boards that uh, advocate that he would uh, like to take violent action against uh, people like uh, the, the people in Denmark. There's even a, 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 a quote from the uh, criminal complaint that, that quotes Headley on a, on a Yahoo message board um, directed to this very topic where he says that he um, would feel disposed toward violence for people who, who printed the uh, cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad. Is there um, a lot of conversation about this in, in, in the uh, community? Do people say, well, here's a guy who was really um, out there trying to do this. A little bit of that, but as I was saying earlier, uh, the people who come from that part of the world, especially Pakistanis, they are so surrounded by uh, these things all the time. Uh, this is just one, one more case of what's going wrong with the country. But sure, within the community in Chicago, uh, they are again watching it because it has become a heightened thing after, as I said, what happened in Abbottabad near Islamabad. Now, how much is there, um, is that playing into um, bringing a lot more attention to this? Because uh, everybody seems concerned about the ISI now and its connections to um, uh, Osama bin Laden or, um, or uh, Lakshari Taiba, and they, people want to know more, and isn't that going to raise this thing's profile and get a lot of attention? It would, but uh, I would look at it slightly differently in the sense that anything that Headley or Dr. Rana might suggest would still be uh, a sideshow compared to what has already happened in Pakistan. Uh, I, I think if you look at the sheer stakes that uh, happened with the bin Laden killing and at the highest level of uh, the two governments, uh, there has been so much back and forth. This will still remain a sideshow as far as I can see it, although it will vindicate some of what India, for instance, has been saying for 20 years. But beyond that, I'm not sure if it would have a tremendous impact. All right. So India is interested in this because they would like to see in American courts evidence against the ISI and links to Lakshari Taiba. Uh, absolutely. And, and and I think there is also a degree of uh, we told you so kind of uh, response because India, I, I used to cover Kashmir in 1989 when the trouble started. 
And since then, India has been complaining about uh, uh, the involvement of some elements of the Pakistani state. But it hadn't been taken seriously for the better part of the last two, two decades or so. Now things are turning around and India feels vindicated in that sense. Now you, you're thinking about writing um, a novel about this? I, I'm writing a, a book, but it, 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 it is written like a novel. It, it, it will be nonfiction novel, if I can call it that. And uh, the ingredients are um, so rich for you? Uh, they are. Even simple things like the other day I was in the court and I see uh, Dr. Rana uh, wearing his brown shoes without the laces, which is a requirement because it's, it, it can, the laces can be used as a weapon. That's an interesting detail for me. Uh, it, 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 these little details build up uh, an interesting uh, reading material as far as I can see it. And you're thinking this will be for uh, the Indian market? Uh, mainly for the South Asian audience, but hopefully we'll find some readers in this part of the world as well. And I imagine just the whole relationships involved in this, um, David Headley and Mr. Rana being uh, childhood buddies and uh, now they're going to be head-to-head uh, -head in court with, a, with a, a lot on the line. I mean, you couldn't have written a better plot than this, including the fact that David Headley has two different colored eyes. Uh, so, I mean, could you have imagined that? No, of course not. So it, it, it's, it's waiting to be made into a novel, a movie, or whatever you want to do with it. And, uh, Tony, finally, we're, we're going to get opening arguments, and we just had the, the juries picked. How did that go? Uh, jury selection was moved actually very rapidly. It was done within three days, and they have uh, quite a diverse uh, jury at, that they ended up now. During the process of, of weeding out um, some of the jurors, they heard some uh, people say, have reservations against the religion of Islam or, or voice uh, saying that they didn't have respect for the religion and things like that. Now, those jurors did not make this the final cut here. Uh, so the, what it, they ended up having was um, they have, uh, by my count, eight African Americans sitting on, on the jury and, and ten women. It's a pretty diverse uh, uh, jury that the defense attorneys for Rana um, seem pretty pleased with. And there, uh, we've got a clip of the defense attorney here uh, talking about the juries. The idea here was to get a, a jury of Mr. Rana's peers. And I believe that we got a jury of Mr. Rana's peers. Uh, people who can understand Mr. Rana's position as an immigrant. People who can understand Mr. Rana's position as a minority in his community. And Mr. Rana's position uh, as a businessman and as a family member. And uh, that's what we're really seeking. Ultimately, Mr. Rana here faces uh, what kind of sentence? Uh, I, Potentially? I, 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 I was told between uh, it could be up to fifteen years, but it's still not. Uh, it's still way, uh, way too far right now. Nothing. There is nothing that's been uh, proven, so it's hard to say at this stage. Uh, Tony, when, once the trial is over, also there's been reports that the Indian government would like to uh, have uh, Rana in their custody, and uh, the, Rana's defense attorney says that he's not been contacted about that. But uh, I think after the trial is over, there'll be a lot to discuss about that. Well, uh, very interesting, and we'll keep our eye on uh, the trial as it moves along uh, to how Arana is. Uh, the opening arguments begin on Monday. And uh, thanks a lot for joining us, Tony Arnold from WBEZ, and Mayank Chaya. He covers South Asian affairs and is writing a book about the trial, and uh, we'll check in with you again. Thank you very much. Thank you.